All of these gentlemen have been on movies where they were dying. Yes. And Don has been on the stage Thanks, as a Don comedian. But I just saw this dying. man, Jack, Jack Wallace. He's been on before, and we, we told him, Jack, we have no room for you, but he's back again, so we can't turn him He's just hanging over Don's, Don's shoulder, you know. He's just hanging around. He's a great actor. He, he's actually sitting right beside Don. He just has a smaller head. I thought, <laughs> I thought they wanted me to, to die on the show. You no. Know? No, but you, you did a wonderful thing where you threw your eyes up. What was that? CSI, I think. And you had been a referee, and you dragged the show on too long, a fight on too long, and I died. And uh, you, you were part of it. Uh -huh. And that's that's his family trying to sabotage the show. And uh, uh, you were in a hospital bed. I don't know how you got in that condition, but you were in a hospital bed with, with uh, IVs and stuff. Uh -huh. And you were dying, and the police were questioning you, and you died in the middle of the questioning. But the way you died was so brilliant. And, and, and the end of it... It might have been cold case. For cold all case? For, for all I know. What do I know? It was cold well, something. You know, you're the actor. You, you don't, you're the actor. You don't know what show you were in? Yeah, but I'm vague, you know. I'm it was one of the many cold vague. shows. See, why I act so bad? I act out of a... Uh, I think fog. it was cold I'm cuts. You're in a fog when you're acting? Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to be so precise as an actor, don't you? You have a great face. They like it, but it ain't. Fog is better, yeah. It's better to be in a fog and better not. I think so, yeah. Fog. you got to be disconnected. When from, I did uh, Over the Edge, you know, there was a scene where I'm taking a kid in, and then the what? guy shoots a tire, and the car goes into the rec room, yeah. and then I'm in the fire, and then the kid in the back looks him, handcuffs, he goes out, and then car explodes. My wife was on location. The fire surrounding me, she thought it was so real. And then when finally the car exploded and I died and the wreck center went up, the guy who was the prop guy who put it all together was like he had an orgasm. And he finally relaxed, like his big uh, explosion scene went off without a hitch. Yeah. Your wife must be gone. Is he insured? How much is he insured? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. What, what was that? Well, Over just, the end. Just kidding. Yeah, that was some rotten kid. He didn't even check to Over see if you were oh, alive. That, 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 that was the film you started, right? Yeah, it was the film about the rotten kids. Yeah. It was, and, it was, but it looked so real. She said, just standing real close, you think it's real. Young actor got oh, his yeah, first break on that. Oh, Matt yeah. Dillon. What's that? Matt Dillon, yeah. He knew he was a star when he's 14 years oh, old. Everybody likes People, to look little dogs here, you know? Hitchhiking to... Yeah. Uh, two states to knock on his door when he's 14 for his autograph. He said, I knew right then I was a star. Wow. People knocking on your door. Do people come out to the no, Coldwater no. Chandler area and knock on your door no. and say, Don Sherman, no. let me in? No, no, they wouldn't dare. Who's that knocking at my door? Who's that knocking at well, my door? Who's that knocking at my door? Said the young fair maiden. <laughs> Good. That little song from Jack Wallace. These two guys get a little random sometimes. Well, but Don, you you did have somebody knock at your door late at night. That was uh, Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper. Oh, two o'clock in the morning when I first came out here, uh, 1963, and we had a back patio door that we lit, uh, looked out on the pool. And at two in the morning, we were banging at the door and we had it. Just come from New York and come out in there with two kids in leather, pouring rain, and it was Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper, an actor friend, that sent them over to my house because they wanted to do a film. And I let them in and I said, Why do you have to come two o'clock in the morning? And they said, Well, at 3:30, the, the sun rises over a particular donut shop in Fontana. Raised donuts. And, and that's going to be it's the. It's the Opening scene of the movie. I knew nothing about movies. How they write movies? And uh, I said, okay. We went out there. And we sat there at four in the morning and watched the sun come up. And they went crazy. And they went outlined the whole script in their mind. I don't know what they were talking about. But the end of it, I I had a deal with them to write a, uh, a movie called Ying and the Yang, which disappeared. After that, Easy Rider came out and Ying and Yang disappeared. And 25 years later, a columnist found the yin and the yang in the Smithsonian Institute and it was part of some collection and uh, Wallace they, Berman they collection. Name. There you are, Don Sherman is in the Smithsonian. But they've never, never filmed it with the movie. Never you got top script. billing, right? Yeah, you yeah got top that, billing. that was the reason we broke up was I had bottom billing. Remember Zabriskie Point? 
yeah by antonioni okay there's a scene where they're gonna explode all of these tract houses and they're gonna go up in there and the director antonioni the casting woman they all went behind the hill i forget whether it's sunset or sunrise and they all smoked a joint and then they waited for the time and they all exploded they were watching it while they were high they all exploded what all, all the houses. houses went up in the air and they were the director and the casting director had smoked a joint before so they were watching the scene explode while they're high yeah uh, but but, but they had to have the explosion in the film. Yeah. They just wanted to see it while it was snowing. Yeah. Why? Enjoy Why, you ask? Yeah. That's That's remember what the guy said? Curious. Remember in The Great Gatsby? No. The guy, Gatsby asked the uh, Wolfshine or whatever his name was, Why did you throw the 1919 World Series? You know what he said? Because I saw the opportunity. Right? No, the connection. Meyer Wolfshine. Yep. Whatever happened to him? He's a Sleepy Billy Burns. Got to seize the day, right? Well, I mean, well, you, 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 you know about the baseball. What was the Black Sox scandal about? The Black Sox scandal. Wasn't it about somebody they throwing, the game. throwing they the, threw game. the game? Yeah, they threw the game. How could they throw a baseball game? Well, they just make errors or they don't hit when they could. Yeah. Or make the spread. Look at the uh, basketball referee that was throwing games. They just don't make a call or they make the call going the other way. Now the points spread. Right, right under the noses of like uh, 100,000 people. Well, what about basketball? You like football? Sometimes you'll see a guy who's got the ball in his hands and he drops it and you say to yourself, did he do that on purpose for the point spread? Sometimes they make these little mistakes, right? I played Sleepy Billy Burns in, in uh, the Black Sleepy Hawk. Billy Burns? Yeah, a film made out of the... Uh, the, uh, the Black Hawk, uh, the Black Sox. John Cusack, eight men out, right? Yeah, and, and it, it, it's in part, and, and I, I passed out. It, it was so hot and everything, and, and, and they, went, they, had, they, they kept waking me up. And I go, but I'm, I'm sleepy Billy Burns. I, you know, you <laughs> yeah, know, why, I'm always why, fall asleep. Why, yeah. why, yeah, what's wrong with that? Yeah, aren't I supposed to sleep through this movie? Goes, hmm, yeah, well, maybe, you know. But it turned out okay. Isn't that funny when they named gang guys like Sleepy Floyd and things like that? Yeah. In my day, they would be bananas. Yeah, they, the love, girls, they love nicknames. The girls would be Mary Applenose. Mary? Or Mary Apple. Hatchet Face, one of my dates. Uh, yeah. You know, before but you'd get those. Margo, it's before I was married. Yeah, Penel they, Penelope they Rottweiler. You, when you wanted to be part of the mob, they'd say, would you, you want to wear, I hear you want to wear the hat. Oh, that yeah. was that kind of lingo for being a made man. You want to wear the hat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, those hats we used to wear at 15 years old. To this day, to this day, in, in, in the hats. film business, uh, how many hats do you wear? You know, one. It's a, it's a saying. Yeah, that's right. You wearing wear many it. hats. Juan wears his cap on. Yeah, I know. I hope there's no pigeons around there. Oh, there is a place in the Midwest where, like, from. Uh, 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 what's his name? The director who had the birds, the film The Birds. Hitchcock. Hitchcock. Oh, where they really are a mob of birds. There's a mob of birds just circling this town. And, say, and they can't get rid of them. They shot at guys with the rifles and the cannons and music. They won't go away. They've been there for months. And it shows that on all the cars, the birds Crap. Birds yeah. <laughs> made this scene. Oh, Bullseye. Bullseye. And it's scary as hell. They're, they're like a gang. And, and yet yesterday I was in the backyard and one bird flew to my a tree. And right after that, bam, 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 bam. A whole gang came and the whole tree was full of birds. Oh, he was a location scout. Hanging from all the limbs. They're very promiscuous. So. Uh, they're... And they all went like a group on to the next place. They're like gangs. Yeah. That's, that's magnificent. Well, the other day I heard two crows talking early in the morning. They're yeah. fun, huh? To the Birdman of Alcatraz. And they have no yeah. controls. They they have no guys in the uh, in the uh, uh, watching the, well, how high or how low, low they are. They they manage their own uh, navigation. But have you ever noticed this about Occasionally crows? Occasionally they get sucked up into a 737. You ever notice this about crows? They speak one language when they're near people, and then when they get up there higher, they speak another language. Oh, I've never got to the point where I can tell a difference. What, they speak <laughs> Korean when they get up higher? Big Latin. Crows <laughs> Big Latin, okay. Crows dialogue. Did you ever know the black guy named Lee Weaver? 
Yes, okay. good, good He's down in uh, Koreatown. He comes over to a place where Don and I used to see each other one time at a friend's house. And he's complaining about in Korea town they have all these signs in Korea. And he does a rant about how we went to America, or you know, Americans went to Korea, and we fought the war, and then we rebuilt Korea. And now Korea, it's all no English, just Korean. He says, finally, after this litany of assault on the Koreans, he finally says, I wish it was the way it was in the old days, when it was just the blacks, the whites, and the Indians, as if that were some magical pastoral time, right? Yeah, now he's talking about the Indian Indians, not the uh, Indians from India. <laughs> American Indians, okay. It's too much to deal with the influx of all the multi-ethnic uh, people of the world into a country. Very hard to absorb. But here in L.A., we have it. I we know. went back to my wife's uh, reunion in Grand Rapids, you know, Calvinists, all white oh, yeah. people, white churches, green. We come back here, multi-ethnic at the airport, and we just said, it's so great to be back in L.A. with the multi-ethnicity, right? That's right. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like the have, unconscious. You don't have that elsewhere in the United no. States. No. We're the no. forerunner, right? What we have is back, going to move back they east need too, it. right? They need, we well, I, I guess New York, in, though. New York yeah, City. New York. We're in Boston, me and uh, Edgar, uh, J.J. Johnson. And... Uh, and I say, I look around and I say, Jesus, something don't feel right. Something don't feel right. And JJ goes, it's all these white guys. <laughs> we're used to, we're from Chicago. We're used to a mixed salad. <laughs> In New York, we have a mixed yeah. salad. But this was all white it's guys. too white for you. And it didn't seem like interesting. It didn't seem American. Well, I told you this the other day. I'm sure it was. It's a lot of Wonder Bread and mayonnaise. Boy, you you, you go gun. by a school. I I, I go home uh, to the school every day about the big one. Those kids come to that school don't look anything like America. There's no more white bread kids. There's, uh, there's black kids, white kids, yellow kids, Oriental kids. It's great. Well, that's America, the shining city what on the hill, right? What a society the kids have to have the advantage of, uh, of getting to know the whole world just by going to school. People would ask me, uh, what, what are you, black, white? And I go, I'm pink, man. Yeah. <laughs> Should they kiss you on the lips? But you, you know how they say that L A has the largest Latino community outside of Mexico. They got largest Armenian community outside of Armenia, you know, and largest Korean community outside of Korea. And, and I heard that in the Armenian community, there's more Armenians in L A than there are in Armenia. In Chicago, he lives more in Polish Armenia. than in Poland. Probably, like 300, yeah. Well, you know, in my neighborhood, East Hollywood, actually, it's called Little Armenia, yeah. which is south of Thai Town. It's north of Koreatown. They come there, but then the, the next stop is Glendale. It's Beverly Hills. There, Glendale is like Beverly Hills, right? Yeah, that's it's right. It's wild how each foreign segment know. creates their own little town. I don't notice anymore. My wife notices that women buy their car referring to its color. You know? Yes. You know, I always used to have a red truck. Uh, really, a red truck? You like yeah. a red truck? Margo likes a blue car. A blue car? And you are a red There's truck a man. Car. Everybody raise your hands out there. Yeah. And Clint Eastwood likes a dark green pickup truck. Really? Yeah. He does. He does. You remember the truck that was in a movie called Bridges of Madison County? Oh, yeah. Yes. That's, does, that's what he drives. He truck. does that. That truck. What, what is it? That Pontiac that, uh, that, that Grand Torino? The Grand Torino. Oh, that was, oh, that was that Ford was Gran Torino. Torino. Yes, it, was. it was. It was a power car. Uh, he was a racist. Uh, yeah, he was well, a, that character was, yeah. He sacrificed himself at the end. What do you call those guys? The slopes. <laughs> like it's called so a guy fish what, face. What is in the mind of a racist? A racist does It's when you don't know the at, other as, people. As far, yeah. as, as far as they're concerned, the other people should not exist, should not be a Well, that's it, yeah. They, they don't exist. Or, it should just be their race. And their or should be behind a fence or something. Anyone who doesn't have a totally, a, a country that's totally of their race and has other races in is always going to be the one. you have to bring the Republicans into this. You should know, <laughs> uh, you should know their traditions. <laughs> the traditions of, of your friends uh, and be aware of certain holidays and, and what I mean their uh, influence on respect. America is great. We look we, we look so diverse now. We look so 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 different. It's so interesting. Well, well what's our word of the day? You don't think maybe, maybe we'll call a diversity. Diversity. Would that, would that be a word of the day for America? Diversity.
Okay, let's say diversity is our word of the day. and That's uh, a good thing. And we'll say goodbye to Jack Wallace, who just goodbye, dropped Jack in Wallace. and goodbye. peered over the goodbye shoulder of Don goodbye. Sherman goodbye. and also Harry Northup. Goodbye, you people. And myself, David Lloyd. a great dying Lloyd scene on CSI. The man dies. Tune in to CSI to see Jack Wallace he dies, you tired tired of by the big one. You want to go to his funeral when he dies on television. <laughs> it's so good. He's I'm not going, going to his I hope, I hope they lay you me can't out. play living pods. Lay me somewhere where I have a view when they come I'm not going to go to either one of you guys. You know, you know As what? a matter of fact, they, plot, go to a mine. plot with a view. They, 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 they go on hospital tours trying to find people close Look, to Look, I already bought my it. underground bunker. Okay. So uh, on the, uh, okay. We have on these comments show. of death, we'll What's shut it down. A you people out there, you, a need a good, you need a good cry. A search of control, David. You're in charge. You're okay. In charge. I'm going to push the button and say goodbye. Push the button no matter what we call.